Welcome back to the Halftime Report. All right, some top picks for 2023. Those are our calls of the day. Tesla, hmm. name top pick Morgan Stanley. That's Adam Jonas. Overweight, target 330. Uh, the pandemic revealed Tesla as the clear EV leader. The stock has been in an absolute free fall. Uh, Joe, you own it in the Joe T. You got to remind me. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, let's you talk call about the Joe T, right? It's, yep, com it's comprised of quality and momentum. You have to take the Some good. question the quality right now, and the momentum is going, obviously, the opposite direction. You have Why to, does it turn around? You have to take the good with the bad. Um, I'll be on overtime on Tuesday, January 31st. I will tell you at that time what we decide to do with Tesla. You mean the rebalance? The rebalance is on a quarterly basis, so we yeah. have the distinctive advantage of, of doing tease. something. That's like deeper than the deepest tease okay, we've but, ever done. But, but look, uh, without question, this stock has, has lost its momentum. It's $497 billion in market cap. The valuation is still a little bit rich. You've mostly owned this stock based on momentum. And strategically, if you're hoping for some form of fundamental turnaround in the company from Elon Musk, you're not getting it. Why? Because he's blaming the Federal Reserve and he's blaming the economy for the troubles of Tesla. There's obviously something more that's going on than just the economy and the Federal Reserve. But as far as positioning, we'll address it uh, at the end of January. I mean, Goldman, you know, they like Tesla. They cut the price target, though, to 235 from 305. Uh, which is interesting. They call it because of softer supply demand, which is, you know, a question given what's going on in China, supply chain, et cetera, et cetera. All right, Exxon named the top 2023 pick at Morgan Stanley. Overweight, 114 is the target. Jimmy. I'm tempted to Don't go back to it? Tesla, but that would really tick you off. <laughs> I'll just say it's a car company and leave it at that. Exxon Mobil. There's a, there's a supply demand imbalance here. And it's going to continue. Why? Because we've drawn down the strategic petroleum reserve here in the U.S. massively. We need to rebuild that. That's going to be more on the demand side. And what happens when China picks up after this post-COVID uh, shutdown? Uh, and Russian oil sanctions. I mean, I could go on and on. I'm piling on here. It's a simple story that the supply-demand imbalance is going to continue. Massive share buyback in place. Nice dividend yield. This is the place to be. By the way, Mr. GM, with that snide comment. Nice. Um, that was a little Adam snide. Jonas would agree with you. I mean, he says Tesla's gap can widen with the competition and the pandemic revealed it as the clear EV leader. So you want to just deal with yeah, that look, since you went back? Um, Let's do it. Yeah, look, I make this simple. People, the bulls, and I'm not, I'm not talking about Joe, right? This, the bulls the, on GM are going to say, look, this is an EV company that Mary Barra and company have done a great job of building out profitability in the EV space it's not in EV the next 12 company. to 20. Scott, it is an EV company. GM? You're, you're GM's holding an EV company? Yeah. That's where the growth in this business is coming from. That's where it's coming from. Wouldn't Ford be considered more of an EV company? So this is a, a yes, yes, but here's the thing. What Ford did, strategy, okay, they said, let's flood the marketplace with EV models. We'll worry about profitability later. There's some genius to that. What GM is saying is, let's get one unified chassis, the Ultium chassis. Let's get that right and then roll out all the models so that we can get the profitability quicker by having a unified chassis. The, kind of the point is GM wants to be an EV company. I, I, know I'm being there. A little, I know I'm being a little provocative. I know. I know. I'm speaking about the future, but not the future five years from now. I'm talking about the future one year from now. Some might say glib. You say provocative. But Some might say a little on. glib. Some might say a little glib. And I, but, but look, this is a stock that is trading six, seven times forward earnings. Uh, I think there's upside. I mean, I think you take that to 10 times, you get a pretty nice return on this. Tesla's trading at 28 times forward earnings. I don't mean to bash Tesla. I mean to say if you trade GM like the EV company that it's becoming, this is massively undervalued. Okay. Uh, Kerry, Schwab at UBS, top pick there. Uh, 90 bucks is the price target. You own that, yeah? Yeah, I like that. I'd say 100 is the price target. It's below a market multiple. The stock really benefits from the cash they have on hand with all the deposits in their bank. It also doesn't face the kind of competition from Robinhood and all the startups that people thought was going to be a big problem for Schwab or Fidelity and the bigger players. And so we think that it's a very good financial right here and uh, attractively priced. 